last four years, fear and terror have gripped this country, have held our citizens in a way that has never been seen before. But, at this very moment, we have emerged victorious, and the United States of America has prevailed through cunning and patriotism. But some of you may be asking, now that the war is over, what is the United States of America doing with its newfound prosperity and peace? For the answer to that, we must talk about Europe. While we might have overcome our impossible odds on skates, our democratic allies in Europe were ill-prepared and too divided to deal with foreign threats the same way that our country can. Unfortunately, that means during the Second Great War, they left with their industry even more crippled and their communities in even more poverty than there was before. We, as Americans, have realized that our negligence to take care of democracies abroad has directly led to the chaos and destruction we have experienced this past decade. Thankfully, due to the leadership of our great President Truman and the wisdom and strategy of Secretary Marshall, we have devised the ultimate plan to forever end wars, known as the European Recovery Program. One of the many great things this country has done. <clears throat> that is much better. In this way, we plan to donate $13 billion out of the pureness of our American heart to the economic recovery and the true evolution of Europe from its impoverished past. But do not worry, fellow Americans, as your hard-earned tax dollars will not be going to waste, as George C. Marshall thought well and hard about this very issue. And the purpose of this video is to educate you into understanding the necessity of this plan. Why must the United States carry so great a load in helping Europe? The answer is simple. The United States is the only country in the world today which has the economic power and productivity to furnish the needed assistance. The six and eight tenth billion proposed for the first 15 months is less than a single month's charge of the war. First, for this plan, our analysts have proven that poverty is the number one cause of war. If conditions in Germany had been less impoverished, the Nazi party would have never came to be. In this way, by injecting 13 billion dollars into the industry of Europe, this will ensure that nobody is ever driven away from the beauty of democracy into the ashes of war. In addition, the distribution of this money shall be tightly controlled by the new European Committee, named the Organization for European Economic Cooperation. This committee shall serve to unite European countries included in this plan towards common goals, and shall also ensure that this funding is distributed where it is most important. Under this committee, the idea of one of the least damaged countries receiving a fifth of the whole funding provided by the plan is as absurd as mixed-race schools in the South. In addition, we have offered this plan to every country in the Earth, with the sole condition that they must adopt democracy and let their people experience freedom. As historically, no war has ever been started by a democratic country. In this way, our democratic allies like Greece and Turkey will not turn to the evils of alternative governmental systems and become deadly enemies like the Japanese. We even gave this offer to the Soviet Union, yes, the source of all vile communism, in the hopes that they might change their ways and join the new era of peace. But they refused to accept our bargain on the basis that it was a plan for interference in the domestic affairs of other countries and an attempt to weaken Soviet influence by forcing U.S. economic dependence on other European states. Despite this being entirely accurate and exactly what we're doing, this is another clear indicator of the unwillingness of the Soviet Empire to compromise and another clear reason that communism must be eliminated. Help the old is neither sure nor easy. It is a calculated risk. It is a difficult program. And you know far better than I do the political difficulties involved in this program. But there's no doubt whatever in my mind that if we decide to do this thing, we can do it successfully. And there's also no doubt in my mind that the whole world hangs in the balance as to 
what it is to be. If you are still not convinced of the genius of Marshall, let me tell you something. If you wanted to have a president that never spent tax dollars abroad, re-electing Hoover Hoover was always an option. But you did not do that because he was a terrible president, so let us do our thing and stop complaining. On the completely national topic of Herbert Hoover, he was so bad that his entire policy is based on doing the exact opposite of what he did. When Hoover decided to increase foreign tariffs, our economy collapsed even more during the Great Depression. So we plan on using the organization for European economic cooperation to eliminate the tariffs from possible with the to facilitate international trade and providing long-term trading partners to the United States. In that way, this current committee is certainly dedicated to a league towards an international European peace organization that can serve as a long-term trading partner and ally to the United States of America and share no ill will or communism. Very fortunately for ourselves, the strongest nation in the world today, certainly economically, and I think in most other respects, uh, there will be requirements in this program for certain sacrifices. But I feel that when you measure those sacrifices with what we are fighting for, uh, one gets a very much better idea of the necessities of the case. As a summary, the European Recovery Program, also referred to as the Marshall Plan, is slated to be enacted during 1948 and conclude in 1951. In this way, President Truman and Marshall are directing this country in the footsteps of former President Wilson. And this plan is the one of the foundational pieces that will make his brilliant 14-point mission a reality. For this plan, we plan to donate $13 billion to the three common goals of this plan. First, providing economic stability, ending poverty within these countries, which will in turn prevent future great wars. Second, uniting Europe and eliminating European tariffs in order to allow for free trade and establish a long-term ally and trading partner to the United States. And finally, third, to rebuild the economies of Europe so that these countries can maintain their sovereignty and independence. And four, to make sure those Russian blasted pigs don't get any more of their grimy, commie hands on our democracy. There's a pair of ours, Russia! You can't have them! Adobe S. Rope Production. And remember, go America!